This is a Sutotal production. Hello, surveyors. Uh, Sutotal coming at you. This is going to be our chapter three practice. Um, and so here's some more isotope practice. Now, in this case, this one goes a little bit more in depth. Um, this one's going to actually, in terms of our isotopes, when we're given these uh, formulas for our isotopes, we need to identify how many protons, how many neutrons, and how many electrons there are. Not just identifying one isotope from another, but actually getting into the meat and potatoes of what these isotopes are really composed of. So, uh, here we have uh, our first isotope, Cu, that's copper, all right, and it tells us that um, we have our top number and we have a bottom number here. So this bottom number is always the number of protons, all right, that, that's the identity, all right. This technically, this number is not needed if we have the symbol, okay. So for instance, copper right it's a transition metal right here right copper is always 29 because any atom that has 29 protons is copper period okay it can differ in its number of electrons and its number of neutrons but if it's got 29 protons that's a copper atom all right um, and it's always that number here on the top up above the symbol on the periodic table all right so this right here tells us that that's got 29 protons and then this is actually our protons plus our neutrons all right so for all of these options you'll notice there's no charge specified here so these are all very fairly simple in terms of proton and electron count it they're the same all right because these are not ions these are all neutral atoms and it's understood because there is no charge all right so that means this guy has 29 protons and then this guy has 29 electrons because it's neutral right now from there to get the neutron we're gonna have to say 65 right minus 29 and I don't have that number handy so I'm gonna just use my calculator real quick 65 minus 29 and I got 36 all right um, next up we have xenon xenon is a noble gas right here right there's our xenon all right and so here it gives us this bottom number which is our proton and the top number which is our protons plus neutrons so yet again remember protons and electrons are the same because all of these are neutral so it's going to be 54 and 54 then to get our neutron count we're going to have to take this top number and subtract the bottom number so 131 minus 54 that's going to be pretty large and in charge 131 minus 54 it's going to be 77. all right uh next up we have silicon um and uh in this case uh you know, silicon is one of those that we have to know, right? Because we need to know the symbols and the identity uh, based off of the first uh, 18 elements. But um, silicon is right here, right, in our P block. Uh, but with silicon, uh, this number is, yet again, that's the number of protons. So this and this are the same because it's neutral. So protons and electrons are the same. Now to get our number of neutrons, we would say 34 minus 14. That's easy to do. This one has 20 neutrons. All right. Uh, next up we have nitrogen. Um, why did I give you the seven? You technically don't need it. But anyway, so uh, with the nitrogen, right, they give us the number of protons, seven and seven. And then to get the number of neutrons, uh, we're going to be saying 15 minus 7, All right, and that's going to be, what, 8? Alright, okay, so one of the big takeaways here is to recognize that not all of these numbers are going to be the same, right? And in a lot of these instances, what you're seeing is we have more neutrons than we have protons. That's possible. You could have less neutrons than you have protons, too. That's something else to consider. All right, now, if we look at these last one, two, three, four, these guys don't actually give us that bottom number, right? They don't give us our proton count. But remember what I said in the beginning. The symbol tells us the proton. This is a carbon atom. So carbon atoms, and for some reason my number's not there, but you know it's five, six, seven, right? So carbon here should have a little teeny tiny little six right there. So that's how many carbon, all carbon atoms have six protons. 
So we know that this is six, and we know it's neutral, so electrons, there's also six of those. And then to get our neutron, we would just say 14 minus six, so that would be seven, eight. Okay, so this guy, these two guys actually have the same number of neutrons. Okay, um, next up we have aluminum. Aluminum is one of those uh, that we have to know, right? Al is aluminum, right? On the periodic table. It didn't give us the number here on the bottom, but every aluminum has the same number of protons. No matter what the number of neutrons are, it always has the same number of protons. So, if we look, it should have 13, right? That's the number up above on the periodic table. And it's also neutral, so that also has 13. And then now we see that this number up top, which is protons plus neutrons, I just need to say 27 minus 13. That should give me 14. Okay, so this aluminum has 14 protons. All right, next up we have F or fluorine. All right, and fluorine right here on the periodic table, right, right next to neon. All right, we see that it has a nine on top, so we know that it has nine protons. We see that it's neutral, so it has nine electrons and then to get our number of neutrons right we need to say nine minus eighteen will give us nine and then lastly we have K right which is potassium not krypton right but we have potassium here uh, y'all didn't need to know the first 18 you need to know the first 36 all right potassium all right so potassium uh, has 19 protons Right, it's neutral, so that means it has 19 electrons. And to get the number of neutrons, we would say 40 minus 19. That would give us 21. All right, so hopefully um, this is decent help to kind of get you started. There's also a quiz tied to this, so it's fairly similar. All right, well, until next time, adios.